Hey guys, y'all remember Kenny from South Park? <laughs> no, that was just spur of the moment. No, this video is kind of split up into two parts. The first part is going to be just some random stuff that I've recorded over the last month or so. And then the last half is going to be some weather stuff. So if you want to skip over to the weather stuff, I'll post the time right down here below, somewhere around five minutes or something. But what it is, is a lot of the time-lapse footage that I've recorded over the last year, and I just want to talk about some of the things that I've learned from watching it and flying in it, and you can go right to that if you want to. library here to upload a video it's snowing I'm sure there's no way you could see that in this video it's snowing right now Spring Hill Louisiana on November the 13th got something in the mail let's see what it is Tucker God hat I got a risky biscuits hat autographed thanks T always wanted one of these Supposed to leave the labels on? Isn't that the cool thing to do these days? Shows that it's still brand new or something. Or no, that's the old thing to do. Who was that? Who was that lady, Minnie Pearl, that left the tags on stuff? Tucker God? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, well, it is what it is. So they're having this main to main garage sale extraordinaire thing going up and down the streets out here. I just took a ride down Main Street to check that out. Oh, what a beautiful day. A little on the cool side, but it's not raining, it's not snowing, and it's not cold. I do have to work till the end of the day today. I'm just on break right now. Just took my little Unis scooter out for a ride just to, uh, to enjoy the day a little bit. My brother gets to leave early today, so I've got to pull his slack, which comes in handy when I need him to pull mine. So I'm really not sweating it that hard. It's a great way to take a break from work. Should have brought my sunglasses though. It's so bright and sunshiny. I stay out too long in it. It gives me a headache without my sunshades. You probably see me wearing them quite often. That's the reason why. I'm not used to the outside. I work inside all the time, so it gives me a headache if I stay out too much too long. Beautiful fall day. It's kind of sad though, the flying season is sort of coming to an end. Although it never really ends around here, I get less flying days. I call this the end of the season. Basically when free flight weather goes kerplunk, it is what it is guys. I live at 33 degrees latitude. So I get some long days in the summer, longer days in the summer, but the winter days are shorter as well. There's a trade-off. You know, if you live at the equator, it gets dark at seven o'clock every night. It never really changes. A few minutes here and there, but the further you go up, the bigger the swings in the, in the daylight. You're all the way up north, you know, there's daylight year round sometimes of the year, and then it gets dark there too other times. So pros and cons. Pros and cons, always got to navigate this uh, busy traffic. Vlogging at the main to main. Hold up. Hey y'all. Hey, most people are packing it up for the evening. Hey. So I didn't record my launch, but I'm out here flying around doing a demo for a student. These guys are building a fence here at the airport. It's real crazy conditions. Everything's blowing really hard and gusty. It's just real garbage to fly in, but I have been in worse air. Everything's shifty. put her back down get back to my training my teaching oh come on you always try to lay it back down nicely but 
you don't always get to pick it. That was fun. I, tried to, I was gonna land by the truck and then I realized all this mud was here. I was gonna land in it, so I, I tried to go past it. <laughs> hey there, I became addicted to flying. I fly paragliders. Flying paragliders has led me to an intense study of the air, how it moves. When you watch it under time lapse, it looks like it's breathing. I've flown many different aircraft, but none has put such intimacy between me and the air as has a paraglider. Just to be able to feel that direct connection with the air, it's very eye-opening and enlightening. And it's a special thing. It has led me to adventures and moments that have changed my life forever. I will never be the same person that I was before I discovered these craft of fabric and string. It's amazing. It's amazing and it has changed me. But I want to go over some of the things that I've studied, what it looks like, what it feels like. I'm presented with a very beautiful sky today. There's a sun dog, sunset, high clouds. Join me for this study of the sky. And this is the actual sunset that I was looking at when I was riding around recording that previous clip. Very cool. Check out the sun dog pops up right about there. You see it? Yeah, it's like a little rainbow off to the side of the sun. Pretty cool stuff. Speaking of sunsets, this one right here was pretty neat because you can see the wind shear. Look at these little clouds hitting that, that upper layer of wind and it's just ripping the tops of them off. I thought it was a pretty sunset, but then when I got to looking, I realized what was happening. It was a strong gradient blowing the other way. I had two masses of air rubbing against each other and you can see it shaving the top of those clouds off as they bump into it. Pretty neat phenomenon. I'm glad I got this one on camera. It was pretty neat. The next few clips show good days. This was just out the window of my job, looking across the parking lot. Look at how held together the thermals are. They're blowing these cumulus clouds up and they're not getting chopped off. So the winds aloft are not too strong. They're just coming up and flowing down naturally. This day was a very similar day, probably a little bit stronger. Again, everything was held together nicely. What, what rose up didn't get chopped by the winds aloft. So the buoyancy to shear was really good for this day and the previous day. Just, just good flying weather. You could have gone big miles on a day like this if you were doing a free flight flight. Free flight flight. So yeah, yeah, good days. I just wanted to show you what good days look like. What are you looking for in the clouds? See how they kind of puff up? Now this day offered a little bit more shear. You see how as they grow up, the winds aloft are just kind of knocking the tops off of these clouds. It would still have been flyable. You could have still got some good miles in, but, but if you look, they're just, they're kind of getting shredded. As soon as they punch through the inversion, they get chopped up. Pretty interesting stuff. This is a good day. I flew a 100 mile free flight on this day. This was the morning of it. Just, just cloud streets stretched into the distance. And this was early. This was nine or 10 o'clock in the morning. This was in Hearn, Texas at the airport. This is what a 100-mile day looks like. Strong thermals and strong winds. Speaking of strong winds, this day was just strong winds. It was really overcast. The sun wasn't able to break through a lot. Uh, I did some training with a guy this day. and He did some kiting with a mini wing. But as the sun started to crack through, you could see the morning thermals were popping into the inversion and they were just getting ripped and rolled and there was, there was nothing that was being sustained. It was just a turbulent, bumpy, rowdy mess. And uh, just well, I got a time lapse of it just to show you what it looks like. You can also see the winds aloft blow in a slightly different direction to the surface winds. You can see it plainly in this image right here. There's maybe a 20 to 30 degree difference in the direction. Although the speed was about the same, I was talking about the Coriolis effect, and that's the cause of that, how the winds aloft are generally shifted a little bit clockwise to the winds that are on the surface, at least in the northern hemisphere. So, interesting phenomenon. I've got some other footage of that coming up. And speaking of that footage, here's some of it right here. You can see clearly the winds aloft are blowing like east to west. And then the clouds close to the ground are coming kind of out of the south-southwest. So quite a, quite a difference in it. And we're looking to the south here. So again, it's that counterclockwise difference. 
these are some clouds that were dissipating. This one kind of scared me into staying on the ground. It was building up. And these time lapses are over 30, 45 minutes. And of course, I'm looking right at sunset. This one was interesting because when it came down and everything sort of hit the ground, it pushed up another wave of tiny little cumies around the side of it. And that's what you see there. And this was a day that I knew would overdevelop. When the weatherman calls for 20 to 30% scattered thunderstorms, this is kind of what the sky looks like. Everything overdevelops and a storm actually dropped. To see the lightning bolt right there, it was just quick. It was one frame. I got a lightning bolt on the time lapse. But the whole storm developed, dissipated, and blew away all while I was at work, making the money to buy my paramotor gas. This wasn't the greatest shot, but it was another day that was overdeveloped and there were some storms in the distance and I'm kind of guessing at where these were. We were actually out at the airport towing this day and I set up the camera to the side and I was keeping my eye on it, but man, it was really swelling up, but nothing ever, ever came to fruition out of these. They were just big, scary, towering, cumulonimbus clouds. I don't know if they were nimbus. They may not have been raining. I think they were just towering cumulus clouds, but I never saw anything come out of those. This is a storm that developed and it's coming from behind the camera. Look at the cloud suck that's going on here in the upper left of the frame. It's, it's, this thing is a big black monster just coming out of nowhere. And if you were anywhere flying in that area, you, would, you could just see it sucking everything like a vacuum cleaner, just hoovering up and turning black. And uh, I, I, this time lapse stops right as the rain started falling. Thought it was pretty neat. I wish it would have got a shot more straight up. This one I got a good shot of. It was an overdevelopment one day this summer. Come out of work and I was like, whoa, look at that. And boy, I went over to the library and set the camera up. It was just a single sail. I looked at it on the radar. It's probably a couple miles wide. Just some, just some big cumulonimbus thunderstorm clouds. This one was a thunderstorm. This was a thunderstorm that I just barely got away from. By the time I got the tow machine put up, it came down as soon as the door shut the rain hit it was such close time and like why did i push it that close you can see the rain fall right before i ran up there i'm reeling in the drogue getting things ready to bail because it is coming at me fast so that's it guys i've got some i swear i've got some flying videos coming soon i've, I've actually done several flights we had the para party there's a lot of cool stuff coming uh this is probably i, I I think this is the last studio video before I get over to some of the flying footage that I've recorded. And uh, I'm kind of behind on all of it. My computer hard drive is filling up with camera footage, but hey, this is how it is, guys. I hope you like the video. I'm going to cut it here and I will be back very soon with some regular old Kylo style videos. Much love, everybody. Kyle out.